Our next speaker, uh, Risha Khan, is a student at the University of Washington, born in Dallas, Texas, to a middle-class American Muslim family and raised in Woodenville. Risha is a junior at, at the University of Washington with a double major in journalism and political science. She is the founding director of the Middle Eastern Commission in the Association Associated Students of UW. As one of six American Muslim delegates from Washington State attending the 2016 Democratic National Convention in Philadelphia, Varisha was among the youngest members of this year's delegation of about 100 members. Motivated by her experience growing up in a national climate that has become increasingly hostile towards American Muslims, she plans to pursue a career in public interest law after graduation. The title of Risha's presentation is How to Change a Million Minds in 15 Minutes. Risha. Thank you so much, Randy, for the great introduction. Um, and I want to thank the uh, Bishop's Committee and all the sponsors for organizing today's important and very critical uh, dialogue today. So my name is Varisha Khan. I am a proud American. I'm a US citizen. I'm a registered voter. I am an American Muslim. As Randy mentioned, I was born in Dallas, Texas, and raised in the Seattle area. I went to Woodinville High School and was captain of my high school golf team. I'm a journalist, pursuing my bachelor's degree in both journalism and political science at the University of Washington. I'm an educated, athletic, strong, independent, proud American Muslim woman, and I'm in charge of my life. <laughs> I go about my everyday life motivated to pursue higher education and to give back to society and to our nation because that is the teaching of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and it's a teaching which my parents raised me to follow. I am just one of millions upon millions of American Muslim women who are driven by my faith to pursue higher education and to give back to society. In fact, a 2009 Gallup poll on American Muslims found that American Muslim women are the second most highly educated religious group of women in the US and are just as likely as American Muslim men to have a college degree or higher education. As I entered professional life, my parents encouraged me to be an ambassador of my faith. They taught me to be humble and grateful for, God, for God's blessings. They taught me to have faith in God, no matter how hard the hardships were in life. I believe in America. I'm proud to be an American Muslim. Millions of American Muslims like me share our country's strong family values, dedicated to raising and educating our children. And we want to succeed in the traditional American way by working hard and supporting our families. American Muslims deserve the same opportunities as all Americans to build better futures for our families and for our children. Yet unfortunately, today, good, hardworking families and children have become targets of hate attacks and hate violence. And sadly, I've been victim to such hate and fear myself. It was a cloudy Tuesday morning in March and I was on my way to a small mosque just close to the UW Seattle campus to give a guided tour and presentation about Islam and social justice to about 50 grade school children who had come to visit. As I entered the parking lot in front of the mosque, a man who was walking in my direction began yelling at me. I started walking faster and with a firmer stride to get away from him, but he began following me and he continued shouting. As he grew closer and closer, his yelling grew louder and louder, and my heart began pounding faster and faster. I was now scared for my life in this parking lot and alley where there was no one else around to witness. After what felt like forever, the man finally walked away, and I was safe. However, the story doesn't end there. As I was entering the mosque, I noticed broken glass on the concrete outside, and one of the young men leading the tour with me opened the door and looked at me wide-eyed and said, we got it bad. Little did I know that moments before harassing me, the man who had been following me had barged into the mosque and yelled nasty slurs at the children and adults inside, anti-Muslim slurs, and then ran out, grabbed a brick, and threw it through one of the windows. 
Thankfully, no one had been physically hurt, but the children had been traumatized by the attack, and we had to event end the event early. What I and those 50 children experienced that cloudy Tuesday morning was a hate crime. And it was just one of hundreds of anti-Muslim hate crimes that happened in just the past few months. And sadly, mine was not nearly as serious as the other attacks. About two months, well, about three months ago, a young Muslim woman in Linwood posted on a Seattle Facebook group asking for help because she didn't know what to do after coming home with a bloodied face, bruised ribs, and damage to her head after being beaten by a man who had yelled anti-Muslim slurs at her as he beat her. Imagine how it must have felt for her mother to see her daughter come home crying with a bloody cheek, bruised ribs, and damage to her head. And just a few months ago in Grand Rapids, Michigan, a man was shot in the mouth by a man with a rifle after yelling anti-Muslim slurs. This man was also fortunate to survive the attack. But one Muslim child in Kansas City, Missouri, 15 year old, Abdus Samad Sheikh Hussein, did not make it home. Abdus Samad was on his way to play basketball with his friend when he was killed by a man who ran him over with his truck that had anti Muslim stickers on it. These are hate crimes, attacks on individuals because of race, religion, ethnicity, or skin color. And since late 2014, one to two hate crimes like these have been reported every single day from across the nation. And that's just what's reported. Many more happen that don't ever get reported. So why? What's causing so much hate? Hate crimes don't happen in a vacuum. Again and again, we have seen waves of religiously loaded news coverage of crimes and commentary when the suspect is a Muslim, which results in spikes of anti-Muslim hate violence and bullying of Muslim children. A study conducted, as also mentioned in the TED talk earlier, by Media Tenor of Primetime News in 2007 to the 2013 found that Islam is featured in primetime news more than any other religion. And the coverage is overwhelmingly negative. Research shows that it's the news coverage and commentary, not the event itself, that determines how the public will react and whether members of, my, of a minority group will face hate violence. Research by the University of Hawaii University of Exeter and National Hispanic Media Coalition indicate that media content can have a direct effect on hate and prejudice against minority groups. Accurate language, accurate language can inform readers while loaded coverage misleads readers and fuels hate and prejudice. This is where hate speech comes from and hate speech leads to hate crimes. When hate speech and conspiracy theories against an American minority, like Muslims, and like those that were spread by Peter Ziev about the construction of a Mukilteo mosque very recently, are constantly spread publicly and that go unchallenged, they foster an atmosphere that causes hate crimes. Never before in our nation's history have reported anti-Muslim hate crimes been as high in number or in severity as in 2015. Throughout 2015, CARE offices, the Council on American Islamic Relations, nationwide received, on average, at least one daily report of hate crimes targeting an American Muslim or someone perceived to be Muslim. Dozens of mosques were burned. Numerous Americans who were Muslim or, quote, looked Muslim were shot or beaten severely. During most of these attacks, Attackers uttered or expressed the same anti-Muslim slurs repeated daily in mainstream headlines and often by candidates and politicians. And we have seen more than a dozen reported anti-Muslim hate attacks in the past six months or so right here in our state. The same slurs that were used by attackers show up every single day in headlines in the news. Headlines from sources like the New York Times, 
CNN, MSNBC, and the Seattle Times. But these headlines are different from the reality of the lives and experiences of American Muslims. American Muslims are defined by our commitment to serving our society. We are defined by our service to this nation. Over 10,000 American Muslims served in our nation's armed forces, and many have made the ultimate sacrifice for our country, including Army Specialist Kareem Khan, U.S. Army Major James Ahern, and U.S. Army Captain Humayun Khan. There are about 50,000 American Muslim medical doctors across this nation saving lives every single day. One in, 18 American, one in 18 medical doctors across America is an American Muslim who are saving lives every day. Hundreds of thousands of American Muslims nationwide are community volunteers who, inspired by their faith, volunteer countless hours to make our country a better place. Thousands of American Muslims are public school teachers, inspiring, engaging, and preparing the next generation of Americans. Thousands of American Muslims are nurses, providing compassionate care. Thousands of American Muslims are business people, and in the many other roles building our nation's vibrant economy. Yet the same slurs that, were, that the young woman in Linwood, the woman who was attacked, who was beaten, the man in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and young Abdus Samad heard uh, who attacked them, the same slurs show up in the New York Times and other mainstream headlines every single day. So what's to be done? If we all had the power to change media coverage, to stop anti-Muslim hate crimes by educating millions of Americans, how would it feel if you could save lives? Each of you has that power in your pocket. What you can do is simply send an email about what you now know about the lives and contributions of American Muslims and the rise of anti-Muslim hate to a mainstream newspaper so that when they publish it, you'll educate millions of readers. So for the Seattle Times, you can email letters at seattletimes.com because your email can change the heart and mind of an editor who may be using damaging words that cause that rise in anti-Muslim hate crimes. And if your email gets published to a letter, uh, as a letter to an editor, you'll be able to change the minds and hearts of millions of readers. Because in the end, it's words that have made history. And your words can save lives. Again, that's letters at seattletimes.com. By emailing editors what you now know about the lives and contributions of American Muslims, your words will have the power to touch millions of hearts and to mobilize millions to bring change. It's the power of your words sent to mainstream newspapers that can counter the hate speech and stop those hate crimes. And as a journalist, I know the power of words. And each of you also has that power. And it's so easy to do. The question is, will you do what it takes to use your voice to educate millions and start that change today? Thank you.